Welcome to Mind and Magic, where we demystify the occult and talk about all things esoteric. All right, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about offers today because recently I've been in a situation where I've had to go heavy on the offerings. And so I thought it'd be a good opportunity to discuss a little bit on why and how we give offerings. Now, the why we give offerings is fairly simple. I will offer and give offerings when I'm looking to gain the assistance or employment of spirits. It's really that cut and dry. So I would say, for example, if you help me with this situation or to help me get this result, then I will provide this offering to you in gratuity or payment. Now, without getting into the specifics on any of my current operations, has it been working out? Yeah, absolutely. Everything's really gone better than I expected, actually. So let's get into some specifics of offerings so that you can easily include them in your practice. First of all, if you're going to employ spirits, make sure that you do not contract with them vaguely. You want to be precise because in my experience, spirits are not known for their patience. Now, this is both a good and bad thing. It's good because they tend to work quickly, and they can go do what they need to do in a hurry without you seeing the results yet, because the cause and effect hasn't come down the line to manifest yet, but they return to you wanting their payment, like the next day or something, and they really don't like to wait around. So you'll want to not be vague about what you're offering and what you want them to do for you and how often you're going to give them their offerings. You want the terms fleshed out precisely. Now, I like to make all my deals contingent on results, results that I can see first. In most cases, there are times and situations where I could be more flexible on that. But you really want to get into the specifics of are you going to give an offering once per week, once per day, maybe small ones every day, but then a large one every week. That's currently a deal that I have going right now, and we'll get into the specifics of what I actually offer in a moment. But when you make your terms, you must stick with it. In fact, I would have on hand what you plan on offering before you offer an offering. And don't make an offering for something specific unless you know that you have it on hand or can get it so that you could fulfill that contract. You don't want to get into a situation where you can't find the thing that you promised. This is one of the laws of magic. Always fulfill your oaths, vows, and promises. It's one of the reasons I made that course, was when I broke a promise of an offering and I paid dearly for it. And when I finally remembered and went to fulfill that promise, I had hundreds and hundreds of large black birds descend upon my property, cawing and squawking their heads off. And these past couple weeks here, as my offering campaign has been going, I've had that happen again like four or five times now. In fact, I left in my vehicle once to go to the store, and they followed me. Needless to say, when I got back, I made that offering for the day. Now, sometimes they'll remind you like that. It may not take such an insane form as it does with me here, but they may find other ways to remind you. But they may not. Don't count on them reminding you. It's real easy to remember to do your offerings when things are bad, but when they get better and things are good again or doing very well, it's easier to forget because you got your mind off it. Things are good now. Always make your offerings as you promised because this is one of the areas that you can get into a lot of trouble. There's really not that many ways to get yourself into a lot of trouble with the occult and magic. But be warned, this is one of the few. Because if you forget to make your offering to the spirits as you promised, those spirits who are not known for their patience, then heaven help you. As long as you keep your end of the bargain, everything's fine. Now, if it's contingent on results and they are not performing and you're not getting those results, then of course you don't owe them anything. But if you are getting results, then you must assume that it was the spirits that had a hand in it and now you have to pay up. 
And it's these considerations that you need to keep in mind before anything else. This is the number one rule for offerings. Keep your word. Now, that said, what makes a good offering? What do the spirits enjoy? Well, what are spirits? Or perhaps I should say, what do they correspond with? Because spirits are non-physical. Therefore, they enjoy things that are non-physical. It's not the thing that you offer to them that they enjoy. It's the essence of the thing that you offer them that they enjoy. So think along the lines of the element of air. Things that you can smell and get the essence from. You know, it's like my cats. The more their food stinks, you know, the more it smells, the more they enjoy it, the more they want to eat it. And it's kind of the same with spirits. They have no use for the actual physical items that you're giving them unless you're giving them something in which to make a home, which I wouldn't advise, by the way, unless it's for one of your own servitors. They have no need for physical objects otherwise. It's the essence of the object. It's the scents and smells coming off of the object that they partake in. So we might offer them things such as incense. Incense is a really good choice for an offering. Candles, a dressed candle with oil and herbs, also makes a good offering. And it don't need to even be a very big candle. Um, I use votive candles most of the time. And they could be good for a 10 to 12 hour burn. You don't need something that large for an offering. Now, you can if you want to, and I'm sure they'll be appreciative of it, but it's also going to take a very long time. I have a dressed votive candle burning on my altar at the moment. They're small, inexpensive, and the spirits seem to enjoy them. So small little votive candles with some oil are good to have on hand. Because remember, it's not the physical candle that's the offering. It's the essence of the candle. As the candle burns, the oil and herbs heat up and fill the space with aroma that then the spirits enjoy. Uh, cigars. Now, I know some people will light them. Um, I know some people who do that. I do not. I simply make sure that the cigar is unwrapped and just placed upon the altar for a good 24 hours or so. As long as you can smell the tobacco from the cigar, it would make a good offering. I pick up packs of cigars at the smoke shop for this purpose. Spirits also like spirits, and by that I mean alcohol. Those of you old enough to partake in such things. I know I have a lot of listeners who are not of age yet, but for those who are, they particularly like rum or wine. Now, I would not personally use any other alcoholic beverages for this purpose. Now, the only exception to this is perhaps if you're working with some Norse spirits, then you may be able to offer them some beer or something, but by and large, it's rum or wine. There will be many times I offer the rum with the cigar, sometimes separately, and the wine is almost exclusively with food. Spirits enjoy food, the essence of the food. They want the aroma off of the food, which means hot meals make the best food offerings, typically, because there could be some colder food that has a very pungent aroma too. But for the most part, when you heat food and you see the steam coming off of it, that's what the spirits are after. Now, one of the things I like to give them is a filet mignon steak dinner. Now, if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for them. I wouldn't want to skimp and give them something lesser than I would give myself when it comes to food. There is a bit of sacrifice to that. Now, first of all, it's a lot more expensive than just a candle. So I consider a dinner like that to be a major offering. And I give such offerings weekly as long as they hold up their end of the deal. There's this place that we found recently uh, a few months back that has really good filet mignon steaks, and we've been going there weekly, but for the past couple weeks, I've been bringing an extra dinner home as an offering, and we hurry back while it's still warm. Now, she might suggest stopping on the way home to pick up something, and I'm like, no, I got to get the offering back home and on the altar while it still has its essence. 
By the next day, I'm coming down to remove it because I leave it out for about 24 hours. The entire temple smells like a steakhouse. <laughs> it smells so good. And it's a shame that I just have to toss it, but it's not mine to eat. It's theirs. I gave the essence to them. And in my opinion, it's worth every penny when you get your results boosted. And I say boosted because you don't want to just simply rely on offerings alone. Offerings are meant to enhance your practice, to be in addition to other things that you're doing. And as I go over in Laws of Magic, you want to layer your magic. Don't just do one thing and call it a day. If it's that important to you, you will attack it from all sides. And employing spirits with offerings is part of that. Now, I know some folk like to offer money to spirits as an offering. I would not do this, however, to any general spirits because money isn't really putting off an essence. I would only offer money and gold and things like that only to specific spirits who are known for enjoying that kind of thing. Now, for example, I keep some of my valuables in a safe, and there is a particular spirit who is reportedly really into money, gold, that kind of thing. And so I give a small portion to the spirit in exchange for guarding our valuables. And because his portion of the valuables is tucked away in a small corner of the safe, in order to guard his, he has to guard ours as well. Flowers could be a good offering, although you always want to make sure that no plants that you bring in are toxic to any pets you may have. Some spirits may be into them, others may not be. So I tend to stick to an appropriate candle with an appropriate oil um, pertaining to the situation, or incense, rum, cigars, wine, and food. Those are my go-tos. And presenting your offerings is very easy. You don't have to do a ritual to present your offerings. All you have to do is put it on the altar, thank the spirits for assisting you, tell them that you're giving this to them in gratuity or payment for their service, that you really appreciate what they've done for you, and hope that they enjoy it. And then take it and throw it away a day later. But leave it on the altar so that they can enjoy the essence of the offering while it is out. Now, if it's an ongoing situation, you want to tell them to please continue and you'll provide another offering by the designated arranged time, whether it be daily, weekly, what have you, and then you just repeat. Although, if you're going to continue on, I would recommend mixing up the offerings. Don't just keep giving the same thing every day. But if the offering concludes your business, and it was just a one-off or you're finished now, thank them again and let them know that when you have need of them again in the future, you will call them up for their service. And that's really about it. There's nothing fancy or an elaborate rite or ritual to present an offering. You don't have to go through a lot of formalities to give someone a payment. No, you just give what you owe them. And that's really it here. But do so in a spirit of gratitude because they are helping you out after all. And giving your offering in gratitude is far better than just giving it because you have to. And if you're doing it because it's something that's very important to you, this isn't that difficult to do. Gratitude should come easy then. Okay, so I hope you found this informative on offerings. If you did, consider subscribing. If you're new here, check out mindandmagic.com for our programs including the Laws of Magic course that I referenced here, which I'm going to give for 20% off the regular price through this video only. Link will be in the video and in the description. This is Frederick Xavier for Mind and Magic, and I'll see you next time. Take care.